Hi class, this is Bill Berry, and this is the first video in our series for Java 2. This is some material from week one. I won't start here with orientation because we will have done that together in a session. You can read those materials certainly online and uh, look at your syllabus, uh, but we're going to start at a different location here. We're going to start down doing a demo project. As part of what we're doing here, we want to make sure that we're on a level playing field, that everyone has the same knowledge roughly. So we're going to start by doing a little mini project that'll review what you know about object-oriented programming, give us a chance to develop everything from scratch and then we will take this and evolve it as we learn a couple of new things that you'll need to do for this class. So let's get started. Let's first look at a sample little project that we're going to do and what I'd like to do with this is I'd like for us to develop it and uh, develop it completely from scratch and give you a chance to read it. So if you'd like to pause your video right now and read this over completely why don't you do that and then we'll continue. All right, so once you've read this over, you'll see that we're making a small object-oriented project, and there are a couple of different objects that we're going to create. You'll see that there's going to be a bank account object and a bank object. When we're working with objects in this class, usually they're going to be a whole lot more than this. So what we'll recommend is that you start by doing designs. In fact, more than recommend, you're going to have to turn in designs before your projects. Typically, projects get assigned first of the week, and then a couple days later, the first thing you owe as a deliverable is going to be a design. Typically, those are going to be uh, UML diagrams, including a class diagram and an object diagram. You can use other tools. I'm going to use here a tool called Violet. UML editor and you'll if you want to download this it's free if you can't get that to work you can use lucid chart uh, that will let you do some things free as well but pick a tool that you like and can create diagrams with and we're going to use that today to do a class diagram so uh, first thing we need to do is get a picture in our heads of what classes we're going to want to do and how they're going to relate to each other so notice over here at the right I'm going to click the class button and I'm going to plop down a couple of classes because we certainly know we have have at least the bank and the bank account class. And I'm going to draw them, drag them around, whatever we need to do here. I'm going to double click these. When you double click it, it'll bring up a little properties box. And I'm going to start by just naming these. Double click. Again, this all comes up on the wrong monitor. And bank account. Great. So the first thing we need to do is kind of figure out what that relationship is. And if you read the DAG or read the project, the little mini project, you'll see that a bank account is going to be something that is referred to by a bank. A bank has a bank account, right? There's a has a relationship. So we know that we can do a depends on arrow here and we'll go in this direction, right? Now notice when you're doing this, you want to click from the center of this one to the center of this one. Once you have attributes, some Sometimes that gets confusing, but you always want to go center to center and that way the arrows will work. Don't forget to click back on select because otherwise you'll be dropping new objects or creating new arrows that you didn't intend to do. The next thing is we've got to figure out what we want to do in terms of the contents of these things, right? We might as well kind of start getting this fleshed out. So let's go back and look at the bank account first and let's see what's going on there. Bank accounts must maintain an identification number plus the owner's name and current account balance. Okay, that's enough to get us started. So what are the attributes that we need to take in, into account here? Well, I'm going to double click bank and once that comes up, I'm going to go list, oh sorry, not bank, bank account. And what do we need to have there in terms of attributes? Well, we know we need to have an identification number, so I'm going to write that in. That's going to be the uh, account ID. And that's what data type is that going to be? Um, in this case, I'll make it a string. We're not going to do math on it, so I'm probably going to make it a string anyway. You're going to make an owner, and the data type there is a string. And then we need an account balance, and that's going to be, for the moment, a double that'll work. Don't forget, we also need to describe our access, right? Are these going to be public or private or protected? We're not going to use protected during this course. So we probably can just go through and go, oops, these all need to be private private, right? As typical data for an object is going to be private. Instance data tends to be private. Notice that this is UML, so we are not writing Java data types here. If you want to be pure with your UML, you write 
the, uh, write them this way where you spell them out and you start them with a capital letter, notice where the colons go. You put the name first and then a colon and then the data type. All right, so that's the first thing we need to do is figure out the attributes. Now, can we figure out what methods go with that? Let's go on and back to look at this. Uh, balances must never be below zero. Great, we'll take care of that later. When the account is opened, all three pieces of information must be specified. Okay, so let's go start with that. Uh, so when we're uh, putting that in the methods, we're going to put a method for the constructor, right? So we're going to simply put here uh, bank account, right? That's going to be the constructor. And then I'm going to put all three things there. So what do you have to do there? First, you have to specify the uh, name which is going to be a string, the name of the owner. Uh, then we're going to specify the ID, which is going to be a string as well. And then I'm going to hit enter so it doesn't get too broad. And then initial balance, and that's going to be a double. All right, so there's the constructor. Now, you can leave blanks in these things, but this is going to render in HTML, so if you really want a blank line between these, don't forget, you gotta push the space bar, so there's at least one thing on there, otherwise it's gonna suck up that space and you're gonna lose it. Okay, so there's our constructor. Now, if we wanna just double check, we'll say okay. It brings it up here, and that's great. Uh, if we want to save this thing, we go to File, Save. Remember that this is going to be an HTML file. You can't then just double click it to reopen Open Violet because it's HTML. So you got to go back into Violet and file open it from there. Okay, so now let's go back and see if we can finish our work on methods. Okay, back to our handout. All right. Uh, after the account, okay, when the account is open, after the account is established, provide a way to change the owner's name. All right, so that makes sense. So let's go back to our UML editor to change the owner's name. So we need to do uh, set owner right and you have to provide the name and that's going to be a string and there's no return so we don't put anything after that we probably are also going to do get methods right that's just typical that unless there's some reason not to we're going to have a get method for everything get owner and that is going to have nothing inside but it is going to return a string we're going to have a get id and that's going to return a string and don't forget the parentheses I put a space in between because sometimes the fonts are kind of odd. And then also get balance. All right? And that's going to return a double. Okay, so look at our list so far, right? We have our get methods, and notice the format here of the UML, and then the set methods. So again, I'm going to put a space in between here, and to do that, I'm just going to hit return, but then I've got to hit space on that line to make sure that the HTML actually renders the space. Great, so back, and let's see what else we need. After the account, blah, 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 provide ways for money to be deposited into the account and withdrawn from the account. Deposit and withdrawal amounts must always be non-negative. Great. So I'm going to provide a way here to do deposits. So under set owner name, I'm going to say plus deposit, and then you're going to provide an amount, right? So tell me the amount, and that's going to be a double. And then I'm going to withdraw. So I'm going to make a withdraw. Notice they want them separated for some reason partly because then they can make sure that the amounts are always positive and they know, uh, you know, if they want to do some auditing or write, writing these to a file or something, that you know that they can do that. Now, one thing that we can do is sometimes, even though typical kind of set type methods don't have a return, we can certainly return something if we find it useful. For instance, when they deposit money, the very next thing that you're going to want to do in the system is find out the new balance. So why don't we just return that? Right? Why don't we provide as a convenience that we're just going to return a double from these amounts. We give them the new amount, the new balance right away so they don't have to make an extra call to retrieve the balance. It doesn't, doesn't change anything. They don't have to. right? They don't have to use it, but it's a convenience. And then, of course, because we're good citizens, we're also going to do a two string. Sometimes I might put that one line down, two string, and that's going to yield a string. So that starts really fleshing out what the bank account is going to have in it. That looks pretty good. We should save our work. Uh, but that's looking pretty good and has a, a pretty good idea. The idea here is behind the design, I know some of you won't like to do this initially, but I'm hoping to convince you that if you'll spend some time here making sure this is right, double checking it against the specification, that you will spend a whole lot of time less coding. The general rule of thumb is an hour spent on design will send you 
it will, will save you 10 hours of coding, and I believe that is true in this class. Don't shortchange the design. Spend your time. The other thing I hope that you're seeing here is when you look at this, you should be able to write most of this code almost automatically off of this, right? There is very little here that's left to figure out about logic. There's there's a little bit when you deposit you have to subtract from the balance. Okay, so there's some logic and there's some preconditions, but I think you'll see that if you have this, this is a darn good checklist to start with in terms of your writing. So now let's go and see if we can figure out the bank one. Notice that if these videos start getting long, uh, I'm going to stop and move on to a new one just because I want them to be bite-sized. So let's do the bank quickly and then we will uh, we will pause this video and come back to do the other kind of design document. <clears throat> All right, so for the bank, maintains a list of bank accounts, the number of which might become large over time. Okay, so a list of bank accounts. How are we going to do that? Well, uh, we let's just be kind of uh, casual about this at the moment, and we're going to have an attribute that's going to be accounts, and that is going to be an array list of bank account. Right? We could certainly do something like that. Again, we're being UML specific. Uh, certainly we could do something like this. Uh, we could do array list bank account, but notice then we're start we're starting to kind of go into Java syntax. So I'm just going to try to be a little bit generic in my wording here. And so let's just say we have an array list of bank account. Okay, try to be very pure in our UML. What else? Let's see, okay, the bank also maintains the current interest rate will, which will be accrued to the accounts monthly and may change over time. Great, okay, so we need an interest rate, right? So we have an interest rate, which is gonna be a double. That also lets us know if it might say it's explicitly and it might not, that when we make a new bank, right, we need to put the initial interest rate and that's going to be a double. All right, we're gonna need that from the beginning. Uh, what else do we need to do? Well, uh, let's see what else it says over here in the in the uh, document. Okay, the bank should allow the, allow the opening and closing of accounts. Great. So how are we going to do that? We're going to probably provide a method called get account, right? You always need to do that because if you want to be able to open and close accounts, notice that bank is acting sort of as a manager of a collection. So we want to make sure that we can get an account. Maybe you give me the ID, that's a string, and I'm going to give you back what, right? In an object-oriented world, let's give them back an object, right? Let's give them back a bank account that corresponds to the ID that they've passed in. What else? We're going to have to open account. All right, if you're going to open account, what do you have to provide? Well, you better provide me the account, right? You better give me a bank account so I can add it. Notice, I don't have to go and ask for, you know, you don't you don't have to pass me the ID and the owner and the balance. Why would I have to make that? It's an object-oriented system. You make the bank account and pass it to me, right? I don't have to go assemble all that stuff. So, you can you can speak in objects, right? Close account and that's going to be an account, which is, again, a bank account. And uh, maybe we give them back something, right? Like maybe we tell them whether we can actually do that, because maybe they asked, me, asked for an account that's not actually in the list. If so, then we can tell them, hey, I, I didn't do that, Boolean, true or false, right? So give them something back that they can, that they can use. All right, uh, maybe one other set of things. We need to be able to set the interest rate. It says it varies over time. So you give the new rate. That's going to be a double, not going to return anything. Uh, what else? Uh, it asks for two other things, right? But probably we want to be able to get the total balance. So we know what everybody in the bank, we want to know the, uh, the account balances of everybody. That's going to just return a double. And then uh, one other thing that it asks, let's switch back. It asks, provide a way to request the total account of all, all account balances, sure, and get a list of all accounts with balances under a specified amount. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to have get accounts below amount, and then you pass me the value, right? What is the amount that you want to do? could call it amount or double. I'd call that amount probably, or total amount. And then what does it give back? Well, we could use array lists here, 
but I think in this case the uh, an array is more of the lingua franca. It's more of it's more traditional. People understand arrays completely. Whether they know what to do with an array list doesn't matter. But let's say just for fun we want to do an array. All right, we want to give an array of bank accounts back as a return from that. The idea here is we have designed, we've looked at the spec, we can go back to the document and we can make checklists, we can actually go here and like highlight each little piece, we can say must have an identification number and then we can mark that like yep we did that part. So you can get all of the stuff fleshed out in your design and then you know for sure that you have everything covered that's here. You can also spend some time kind of making sure it makes sense. Is there anything missing? Does this link make sense? Is there support here for everything you need to do with this relationship? Well, yeah, I have I have an array list of bank accounts that supports the HAZA relationship. So you can actually get a whole bunch done, especially in a complicated model, to make sure that you've got everything figured out. So spend your time on this. Again, this is going to be your first deliverable, and I'll give you feedback on that so that you don't get too far into coding without having feedback about, oops, you forgot this, or don't forget you need this other thing. All right, so we're going to we're going to stop this video now because we've uh, we spent enough time here. We're going to come back and do the second type of design document, and that's going to be the UML object diagram. But this one gives us our UML class diagram, and that's a good start. So thanks for watching this video, and continue watching the next one for the other designs.